Chapter 5 of Antikshetra Khand This chapter contains nine sections. Chapter 5 Section 1 Sanat Kumar glorifies Mahakal Tirtha. Once, Goddess Parvati requested Shiva to describe the significance of Mahakal Tirth. Lord Shiva replied once, Santa Kumar, one of the Mansaputras of Lord Brahma had gone to his father's abode, situated at a place near Meru Mountain. Sage Vyasa arrived there and asked him the same question. Santa Kumar had revealed to him that all kinds of sins lose their evil influence at Mahakal Tirth. He had also told him that it was called Pitha because Matrikas had their abode over there. Anybody who is fortunate of leaving his mortal body at this holy place is freed from the vicious cycles of birth and death. This place is very dear to Lord Shiva and is also called by various other names like Ekamaragvan, Mahakalvan and Vimukti Kshetra. Chapter 5 Section 2 Kapal Mochan Once, Lord Shiva arrived at Mahakal forest with a skull in his hand. All the trees and vegetation were delighted to find him in their midst. They requested Lord Shiva to remain there forever. Lord Shiva told them that it was not possible for him to stay there forever but on being requested once again agreed to stay there for at least a year. After one year, when the time for departure came he released the skull from his hand as a memorial. When Lord Brahma came to know of this incident, he instructed all the deities to reach Mahakal forest without wasting any time so that a grand yagya could be performed at the place where Shiva had left the skull. All the deities went to the said place and worshipped Lord Shiva by employing the rituals of Pashupatvrat, which Lord Brahma had taught them. Lord Shiva became pleased by their devotion and said perhaps you all are not aware that there was a specific objective behind my act of releasing the skull from my hand. This act of mine was done to protect your lives but it seems you are unaware of its significance. In a way, all of you have already received my blessings in advance for your deep devotion. What else do you wish for? Deities were amazed by Shiva's statements and were wondering what Shiva was trying to convey. So, they requested Shiva to unravel the mystery so that they could understand what he meant to say. Lord Shiva told them the followers of Maya were planning to kill you while you were busy doing penance but no one of you was aware of their evil motive. I came to know about this in my deep state of meditation and dropped the skull from my hand. As soon as the skull touched the ground a thunderous sound was made as the result of which all the demons were killed instantaneously. All the deities thanked Lord Shiva for protecting their lives. In course of time this particular place became famous as Kapal Mochan Temple and is presently situated in Ujjain. Chapter 5 Section 3 Various Names of Ujjaini Puri Once Sage Vyas requested Santa Kumar to reveal why Ujjaini Puri was known by various names like Kanka Shringa, Kushasthali Avanti, and Padmavati. Santa Kumar replied once, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva arrived at Ujjaini Puri in search of Lord Vishnu, who had disappeared from his abode. To their pleasant surprise they found Lord Vishnu staying there. Both of them requested Vishnu to allow them to stay at Ujjaini Puri and said O oh Lord, when did you create such a magnificent place with golden mountain peaks? Allow us to live in this beautiful city for we cannot live in your separation. Lord Vishnu requested Brahma to make his abode in the northern part of the city while Shiva was told to make southern part as his abode. Lord Vishnu then told them since you have referred to this place as a city of golden mountain peaks therefore from now onwards it would become famous as Kanchan Shringa, Golden Peaks. Sanat Kumar then went on to explain why Ujjaini Puri was also called Kushasthali having created the world. Lord Brahma requested Lord Vishnu to nurture it. 
Lord Vishnu agreed on the condition that Lord Brahma provided him a pious place on the earth from where he could perform his duty. Brahma then picked up a handful of kusha grass and threw down on the earth. This way Lord Vishnu performed his duty as the nurturer of the world sitting on the seat of kusha grass. This is the reason why this place came to be known as Kushasthali. Sanat Kumar then described how Ujjaini Puri also came to be known as Avanti Puri once. After being defeated by the demons, deities fled to Meru Mountain. Later on they went to Lord Brahma and sought his help. Lord Brahma took all the deities to Lord Vishnu. Hardly had they reached the abode of Vishnu and offered their obeisance. Then they heard a heavenly voice there is a sacrosanct place called Kushasthali in the forest of Mahakalvan. This holy place is graced by the presence of Lord Mahadeva. Go there and engage yourself in austerities and you will certainly become the master of the heaven once again. Subsequently, all the deities went to a place called Peshach Mochan situated in Kushasthali and engaged themselves in various austerities. As prophesied by Vishnu, the deities indeed defeated the demons and became the ruler of heaven. The term Ava means the protector and since it had protected the deities hence it became famous as Avanti. Sanat Kumar also described how Kushasthali also came to be known as Ujjani once. A demon named Dripu did an austere penance to please Lord Brahma. When Brahma appeared he expressed his wish of becoming immortal. Lord Brahma fulfilled his wish as the result of which Tripur became arrogant and started tormenting the deities. The deities sought the help of Lord Shiva, who assured them that he would kill the demon. Subsequently, Lord Shiva did kill Tripur with his most lethal weapon Pashupatashta after a fierce battle. The place where this incident took place became famous as Ujjani because of the fierce battle fought between Shiva and Tripur. Continuing with the tale which described the reason why Ujjaini Puri also came to be known as Padmavati. Sant Kumar told Vyas during the time of ocean churning Ambrosia had also emerged from the ocean bed along with many other valuable things. The demons wanted to drink ambrosia so that they could become immortal but the deities were against this idea. Very soon, the arguments turned into a major dispute and both the sides started quarreling. Narad requested Lord Vishnu to do something in this regard. Lord Vishnu disguised himself as a beautiful lady and was successful in infatuating the demons. Finally. He started giving ambrosia to the deities who after drinking it became immortal. A demon named Rahu was sitting in the rows of the deities after changing his guise. Lord Vishnu was unable to recognize Rahu and gave some ambrosia to him mistaking him to be a deity. But, hardly had Rahu gulped down ambrosia and before it could reach down his throat, Vishnu severed his head. Rahu's head became immortal as the result of Ambrosia's influence. This incident had taken place at Mahakal forest. Later on all the deities distributed the whole wealth, which had emerged from the ocean among themselves. This is the reason why Ujjaini Puri came to be known as Padmavati because Padma is another name of Goddess Lakshmi. Chapter 5 Section 4 The Grandeur of Avanti Puri Santa Kumar says once, Parvati requested Lord Shiva to explain why Avantipuri was considered so holy by the devotees. Lord Shiva told her that it was so because there were numerous holy places situated over there. Lord Shiva had told her there are four holy rivers flowing through the different regions of Avantipuri Kshipra, Divyanav, Nilaganga and Gandhavati. There are temples belonging to 84 Shivalingas, 8 Bhairavas, 11 Rudras, 12 Adityas, 6 Ganeshas and 24 Goddesses. Not only this there are also temples of Lord Vishnu and Brahma. 
Avanthipuri is spread in the radius of one yojan. There are temples belonging to ten different incarnations of Lord Vishnu Vasudev, Anant, Balram, Janardhan, Narayan, Rishikesh, Vara, Dharnidhar, Vaman and Lord Vishnu himself taking rest on Sheshnag. Apart from these there are many other holy places situated at Avantipuri, which enhances its sanctity and holiness. Chapter 5 Section 5 The Descent of Narmada Explaining the reason why Narmada had to descend down to earth, Sutta generated a tale to the assembled sages once. Sage Markandeya was taking rest at the bank of river Narmada where Yudhishthira accompanied by Draupadi arrived there. Yudhishthira curiously asked Markandeya about the reason he had chosen the bank of Narmada as his resting place when there were so many other holy places of greater significance. Sage Markandeya recounted a tale which said how some sages had requested King Pururva to bring down river Narmada to the earth so that the whole world becomes liberated from its sins. Describing the holiness of Narmada, sages had told Pururva the holy Narmada is capable of liberating the whole world from its sin. So, you should find means so that Narmada descends down to earth. Later on, Pururva did an austere penance to please Shiva. When Lord Shiva appeared before him, Pururva expressed his wish. Shiva instructed Narmada to descend down to earth but she told him that she needed a base for that to happen. Lord Shiva then instructed Paryank the son of Vindhyachal mountain to hold Narmada while she descended down to earth. Priyank agreed to do that and this was how Narmada came down on earth. Initially, the whole world was flooded with the waters of Narmada but at the request of the deities she minimized her size. Narmada blessed Pururva and instructed him to perform the rituals of Tarpan in the name of his ancestors so that they became liberated from their sins. Pururva complied and thus by performing Tarpan liberated all his ancestors. Having finished his tale, Markandeya told Yudhishthira that one who takes a holy dip in Narmada attains virtues similar to that of performing Ashwamedhyagya. Chapter 5 Section 6 Narmada Marries Purukutsu Markandeya says O Yudhishthir King Purut Kutsu was Samudra in his previous birth and had been cursed by Brahma. The descent of Narmada on earth made the deities extremely delighted and they requested Narmada to give them the privilege of experiencing her divine touch. But, Narmada refused to give them that privilege on the pretext that she was still unmarried and it would not be proper for her to do so. All the deities then requested her to become the consort of Purukutsu to which she agreed. This way, Narmada married Purutkusu. After getting married, Purutkutsu requested her to liberate his ancestors so that they could attain to heaven. Narmada readily obliged and this way Purutkutsu contributed in his ancestors' departure to heaven. Chapter 5 Section 7 Manu receives a boon from Narmada. Markandeya says Manu ruled over Ayodhya during Swayam Bhuva Manivantar. One day, while he was going to sleep, he heard a peculiar sound, as if numerous small bells were ringing. He was perplexed and could not ascertain the cause of that sound so he asked Sage Vashisht about this. Sage Vashisht made a revelation by which Manu was startled. Sage Vashisht told him there is a holy place called Tripuri situated at the bank of river Narmada. The sound that you heard last night emanated from the small bells attached to number of aircraft kept on the roofs of the residences of such people who are virtuous. O King, only Narmada is capable of giving salvation to lowly of sinners. Manu was highly impressed and decided to go to Tripuri along with his whole clan. All of them took holy dips in the Narmada and became liberated from all their sins. 
Manu performed a grand yagya at the bank of Narmada to which all the sages and hermits were invited. Narmada became pleased by his devotion and expressed her willingness to fulfill any wish that Manu desired. Manu requested her help in bringing down Ganga and other holy rivers to earth. Narmada blessed him and said in the first half of Treta Yuga, One of your descendants named Bhagirath would accomplish this great feat of bringing down holy Ganga to earth. In the second half of the same era other holy rivers like Kalindi, Saraswati, Saryu, and Mahabhaga would also manifest themselves. Chapter 5 Section 8 Jamadagni Receives Kam Dhenu Markandeya told Yudhishthir Sage Jamdagni was a great devotee of Shiva and he lived in Narmadapur. He spent his day chanting mantras in the praise of Lord Shiva. Once, he performed an austere penance, which lasted for a month. Ultimately, Shiva manifested himself from the Siddheshwar Linga and appeared before him. Lord Shiva asked Jamdagni to ask for anything he wished for. Jamdagni expressed his desire to have Kamdhenu so that he could perform his rituals and other religious obligations without any problem. Lord Shiva blessed Jamdagni and disappeared. The next moment, Jamdagni found Kamdhenu standing in front of his hermitage. Now, Jamdagni got everything that he wished for. This way, he was a happy and contented life until one fateful day when he was killed by a greedy king named Karthvirya, who subsequently took Kamdhenu along with him. While the greedy king was still on his way, Kamdhenu cursed him that very soon not only he but the whole caste of Kshatriya would be liquidated by Parshuram Jamdagni's son as punishment for having committed such a ghastly sin of killing an innocent sage. After cursing Karthavirya, Kamdhenu went to her original abode the heaven. Later on, when Parshuram learnt of his father's slaying, he liquidated Karthavirya and the whole caste of Kshatriya as had been prophesied by Kamdhenu. Chapter 5 Section 9 Description of Hell Yudhishthira requested Markandeya to describe what a sinner had to go through in Yamaloka and also that what kind of a person should be considered as the most ghastly sinner. Markandeya replied donating food to needy people is an extremely virtuous deed and there is no virtuous deed greater than this. A person who donates cereals can be aptly called a nadata one who provides food. One who has never donated cereals in his lifetime is definite to go to hell and has to tread an arduous path leading to it that is ridden with prickly thorns, pointed nails and other sharp objects. The entire path leading to hell is extremely dark and covered with large pits. The path is also covered with unbearably hot sand spilled all over the place. The sinner is forcibly taken by the Yamduts despite their reluctance. The sinners repent for the sins they have committed but it is of no use to them, as they will have to reap the fruits of their evil deeds. They have to undergo all sorts of painful experience they are forced to pass through fire and pits full of filth. Those sinners who have atoned for their sins are not treated so harshly by the Yamduts. After they appear before Yamraj, Chitragupta reminds them of all the sins they had committed. Thereafter, Yamraj orders his attendants to purify the sinners by putting them into the ocean of the hell. There are 28 types of hell Sati Ghora, Rodra, Ghortama, Dukhajanani, Ghorupa, Tarnatara, Bhayanaka, Kalratri, Ghatotkata, Chanda. Mahachanda, Chandakolahala, Prachanda, Varagnika, Jaghanya, Avraloma, Bhishni, Naika, Karala, Vikrala, Vajravinsti, Ast, Panchukona, Sudirgha, Parivartula, Saptabhauma, Ashtabhauma, and Dirghamaya.
Each of the latter hell is more horrific than the former. Sinners have to undergo unbearable pain and sufferings in the hell. They are tied up by very hot iron chains and hanged down from trees. Yamaduts attach hot and heavy iron balls to their feet and thrash them with hot iron rods. They are then put into wells of filth. The tongue of a liar is rooted out with brute force and a person who shows disrespect to his elders and teachers. His mouth is filled with hot sands and boiling oil. Similarly moral women, who do not fulfill their obligation towards their husbands, are thrown into a horrific hell named Lohakumb. O Yudhishthir, a man's life is too short and uncertain. One is not sure when his final call would come. So, one should try to lead a virtuous life to the best of his ability.